Mr. Speaker, I rise to, to tell you a true story from Scranton, Pennsylvania. When Matty Loftus got out of the Army in 1970, he went to work for the TV plant in Dunmore, Pennsylvania, just north of Scranton. At the time, it was owned by RCA and later became Thomson Consumer Electronics. Matty Loftus was 19 years old, and this was a great job, manufacturing picture tubes where a lot of great people worked, as many as 1,600 men and women. The pay was good, the benefits were excellent, they were union jobs, and the picture tubes they put together were so good, this company was able to sell them to Sony in Japan. The people working at this plant were a community. They had wonderful company picnics, they had softball league, they organized holiday parties for the kids and fishing derbies, and Matty Loftus worked there for, for 30 years. He was able to raise four children on his salary alone. Chuck Lampman is the same age as Matty Loftus and their friends. Chuck went to work for the RC, RCA plant in 1972 when he was 21. He started in production and he loved that job too. He says, we were making the Cadillac of American televisions. By the year 2000, we were already starting to make the first generation of flat screen TV panels. Around that time, Thompson won a worldwide award for making the best 27 inch TVs in the world and everybody at the plant was so proud. Chuck says, that wasn't just a job, that was a way of life. John O'Hearn. He got out of high school in 1975. He got a job at the TV plant right away. He worked production at first, but then he got bumped up into the machine shop. He made lifelong friends at that factory. In 1994, NAFTA went into effect. Maddie, Chuck, and John, they didn't, they knew about it, but they didn't think too much about it. Uh, John remembers people in the machine shop that were interested in politics arguing over the effect of NAFTA. Through the 90s, these men and women were working the factory 24-7 in three shifts, putting out over two million picture tubes a year. They used to say, they'll never close us down. We make this company too much money. And then it came, May of 2001. Management called everybody into the plant and gave them the news. The plant was closing in August, three months from now, because they were moving to Mexico. People were shocked. Nobody saw this coming. They tried to negotiate with the company, and Maddie and Chuck remember the answer. It was, are you willing to take a $13 an hour pay cut and work for $3.25 an hour? Maddie remembers the pride that these people had at the plant working the last few months, the pride that they did their jobs with. There was no vandalism, there were no work stoppages, no slowdowns. They finished out their jobs showing the pride in the work that they had had for a generation. He remembers the tears on that last day and how people passed out lists of names and phone numbers so they could all stay in touch. Chuck remembers the last day that trophy for the best 27 inch TV tube was still in the, the company lobby. And all three of them remember the aftermath. They remember the divorces. They remember the suicides. Maddie still had two daughters in public school. He went through his family savings and he had to cash in some of his retirement money, take the penalty. Now he works as a security guard making $10 an hour. He's 66 and he can't afford to retire. Chuck was out of work for years and eventually he found a job making half the money. He's also 66 and he can't retire. John can't forget having to tell his daughter Lindsay in May of 2001, he was losing his job. She was in tears. She was graduating high school the next month. She wanted to go to college. When Chuck found out the current Republican tax plan is to drop corporate tax to 20% for companies doing business in America, but to 10% for American companies doing business overseas, this is what he said. Haven't we lost enough already under NAFTA? Now you're going to reward companies for shipping more jobs overseas. Mr. Speaker, this tax bill will ship more jobs overseas. This bill stinks, and I won't vote for it. I yield back. The gentleman yields back.